His career spans more than six decades, and this week William Shatner was honored by the same theater where he got his first big break. <laughs> Friends and colleagues presented Shatner with the Stratford Festival's prestigious Legacy Award. The Montreal native spent three years with the Ontario Theatre Company in the mid-1950s. I sat down with him before the big ceremony. Tell me your reaction when they called you and they said that you were going to get this award. Um, I, I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Who? Uh, it, it's great. I spent three years at Stratford early on. I missed the first year uh, because I thought I, I'd had a job. I was in a summer theater, which I'd been to for couple of years and and I thought I'm not going to give up that regular job for something that is so weird yeah. <laughs> in some small town up uh, uh, north of Toronto and they're going to do a season and and then it obviously yeah. fail uh, and so I did uh, something else in Montreal but then that first season was a happening and it exploded on the artistic scenery of Canada and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So the second year when they asked me, I said yes, and I was there for three years. And, I mean, you, you've been, you were in so many different productions, um, Eid Basrax and Taming the Shrew, and many of them, and then the famous, the famous story of you being the understudy for yeah, Christopher Plummer. Uh, exactly, Chris was playing Henry V, and I was his understudy, and um, early, early on, uh, we, a week or two after we opened, uh, he got momentarily ill, and they asked me if I could go on. And th there had never been an understudy rehearsal. I have never been, before or since, <clears throat> a party to a to an understudy going on. Really? Yeah, that's how how infrequent it is. Were you terrified? I mean, this is. I said yes, I could go on, because I had drilled the words into my head for some reason. I, I just uh, obsessed over learning the words. But I didn't know where to go on stage, because we hadn't blocked prepared. It. We hadn't blocked it out, and I didn't know anything about how to play it. Um, and there were twenty five hundred people in the audience <laughs> and critics, and I just. So was I afraid? I was sort of inured. I just, um, I was numb. Went on, great applause, headlines, and I, I can't imagine even thinking about doing it again. Like, I, I, it would be impossible. I'd say, I would say now, I don't know the names of the actors, <laughs> let alone, uh, you know, and I'm, I've never done the words out loud. You did that. You had applause, as you said, headlines, and the praise of Christopher Plummer as well, who said that he knew you were going to be a star. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris was, uh, Chris jumped out of his sick bed and <laughs> appeared the next night. <laughs> We've laughed about it since. When you think that there are some people who will still say, until and unless you've done Shakespeare properly, until and unless you've done the stage, the live theater, you really don't have a handle on being an actor. There are some people who say that. You started doing that. Did that give you such a great ground base for what you would then do for six decades? I think I've only recently discovered uh, what to do as an actor. Uh, it's true. It kind of, I suppose some people, myself, have an instinct for it, had an instinct for it, and did something, almost imitative for a while, and then it became indigenously you. But I, uh, I, I'm filled with doubt about my abilities and, and constantly question myself. And, and we would say, like, why? How is that possible when you've done so many, uh, almost everything you've done has been a great success, from television to comedy to concerts to writing books. How could you doubt yourself now? And my answer to how could I question myself lies in the area of why did I obsess over those lines in Henry V 
I mean, who, who in their right mind would say, I better learn these words? Mm. M months, not just weeks, months before you were going to have a rehearsal for understudy. Mm. I don't know. I, 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 I must have thought, I've got to be good in this. And the only way I can be good is by working hard. Um, I, I know you've got a big, busy day, but before I let you go, the amount that you tweet is awesome. You embrace that. Well, you know, it's modern day. Uh, you can make judgments on how people respond to the, in the tweeting area. And you've got a great sampling, if you're talking marketing, you got a great sampling of, uh, you know, in my case, a lot of people. There was one little thread there going on about someone, I think, asked you if you were going to be twerking during a show. And you uh, responded and said you thought it was banned. <laughs> I thought, good for you. You're not shying away from any of this. Uh, right. Well, you know, if I could shake my hips, <laughs> if I weren't so stiff. <laughs> oh, you probably could and people and would love it. It's an all-male band, which is all uh, <laughs> circus, all four guys. Uh, it limits your twerking. <laughs> But, but not your tweeting. <laughs> All right, not the tweeting. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank and congratulations you. on a well-deserved legacy award. Thank you so much. Yeah, he's a man who completely embraces the craft. In fact, his publicist built in, he was talking to her afterward, built in a two-hour lunch break for him. And he took a look at it on the schedule and he said, I don't need that. Just put me back to work. It was just, and that's the kind of guy he is, over 80.